Do you remember when you first learned how to solve max-min type problems back in single variable calculus? You know the story. You find the critical points, you apply some kind of test like the second derivative test, something like that, and then you classify the critical points as being either maxes or mins or uh, degenerate stuff. Okay, well, what do we do now that we're in the multivariate case? Well, it's gonna be the same story. Let's say that we've got a function that's got uh, multiple inputs, n inputs, and then one output. We're going to need to update some definitions, update the second derivative test, and then tell the same story. So let's get started with a definition or two in order to find and classify critical points of functions. And our first definition is going to be that of a critical point. Let's say we have a function f, n inputs, one output. A critical point is a location, an input, where the derivative is either zero or undefined. Same as back in single variable calculus, but because the derivative is a matrix, a linear transformation with n entries, in order for that to be equal to zero, this means that all the partial derivatives must vanish, not merely one partial derivative. They all have to be zero. Now, if you prefer to think more geometrically, you could say that this is where the gradient is a zero vector, or again, undefined. That is what a critical point is. Now, the lemma that gets us started is that for such a function, you attain a local maximum or a local minimum only if that location is a critical point, or if we run the machine backwards, non-critical points cannot be local maxima or minima. They cannot be extrema. This is the same as it was back in single variable calculus. If any of the partial derivatives is non-zero, then you're increasing or decreasing in some direction.